Sometimes life can get real crazy and make you believe that you're losing your way. Whenever you feel like this, I want you to look in the mirror and say, I know that I can make it. I'm a child of God, no need to fake it. If my confidence begins to fade, I'll remind myself I'm fearfully made. He's got a plan for me and that's a fact. So I'm gonna keep on pushing, ain't no turning back. Wait, pray, slay all day, put it on repeat and say, no weapon formed against me's gonna prosper not to take. Wait, pray, slay all day, put it on repeat and say, no weapon formed against me's gonna prosper not to take. Today we're talking about the importance of learning to treat your time, attention, conversations, and your personal space like you treat your money, even better than you treat your money. Don't forget to like, subscribe, share if you find value here. Let's get this channel to 100,000 subscribers and spread these messages. I know with your help, we can meet this goal before the end of the year. Before we get into today's topic, I want to tell you about the awesome mug that I am drinking out of, and it is the Wait pray and slay mug same title as the new song and it is a reminder that when god allows me to wait don't forget to pray and slay my goals for the day it's available at cassandramacministries.com if you have any of our mugs hoodies t-shirts or any of my books which one do you have and how has it benefited you let us know in the comments section so why is it important to treat your time, your attention, conversations, and your personal space like you treat your money, better than you treat your money? And I want to give you a scripture that really speaks about how we are to respect this resource, this gift of time that we have. And then we're going to uh, dive in. And so one of the scriptures that have really served me well, particularly with respect to recognizing that time is a gift and a resource comes from Psalm 90, verse 12. And it says, so teach us to number our days that we may apply our hearts unto wisdom. So we got to be taught to number our days. And when we're taught to number our days, what that is essentially saying is we need to recognize that time is a gift Time is a resource, but it is a finite resource. We have a death date, so we don't have all the time in the world. And time is also allocated to a variety of things, meaning you're going to work if you're working. Uh, you need time for rest, to rest your body, time for your family, and the things that are important to you. And so we have to know how to allocate this resource, how to respect the gift that time is and we don't want to give our times to we don't want to give our time to things that don't serve us well that bring us down right so the scripture says teach us to number our days and it tells us why so that we may apply our hearts unto wisdom our heart represents our emotions and most people make decisions based on their emotions, based on how they feel. Some people make decisions because they are triggered in a particular direction. And so when we recognize the brevity of time, that's what it means to number our days. It's a few things. Number our days means to recognize that time is a finite resource and a gift. To recognize the brevity of time, life goes by very quickly, quicker than we think. To understand that time is a gift that is not to be squandered and wasted, but it's to really be very intentional and purposeful with our time. And when we are intentional and purposeful with our time, we are able to gain a heart of wisdom. We are able to apply our heart unto wisdom. We're able to make wise decisions and we can step back and say, is this the best use to my time having this conversation about something that doesn't better me? Is it the best use of my time arguing with cousin so-and-so, Uncle Bob at, uh, you know, the family uh, uh, dinner, the family brunch? Like, is this the best use of my time spending 30 minutes going back and forth arguing? Could my time be better used doing something else? 
Is it the best use of my time to constantly over explain myself to somebody who's committed to misunderstanding me? Is this the best use of my time? So you really want to think about that because time is a resource that is finite. And so we want to learn to treat our time and attention that goes hand in hand because your time really is your attention and your focus. It is what we give our attention and our focus to. And so, so often we are our own joy stealers and we are our own time wasters because we allow people to waste our time. And you want to be very, very intentional. Even our conversations, that's part of your time, right? The things that you spend time talking about take up time. So if you're having a whole conversation for two hours, arguing about whatever the thing is that you're arguing about, and it's not even that important to you, because you're not going to, number one, you're not going to be able to change that person's mind, because when a person's mind is set on what is set on, that's what it is. And even more importantly, is this the best use of your time? And so you even want to be intentional about your conversations. You want to be intentional about your personal space. Everybody doesn't deserve access to you. Everybody shouldn't have access to your home as an adult. And if you live with other people, then everyone shouldn't have access to your room. I mean, you got to figure out the details. But when you have a a mindset that my home is open to everybody you open in your home to all kind of spirits all kind of personalities and then we wonder why we feel depressed after certain conversations we wonder why we're so angry and heated after certain conversations because we are not numbering our days when we number our days we number our time attention conversation and personal space we treat it like we treat our money Think about how you treat your money. If you, are, if you are responsible with your money, there are going to be certain things that you do. So number one, you are going to look at your income and you are going to look at your expenses. So whether you're looking at rent, your mortgage, your groceries, you're going to look at how much income you bring in monthly or every, every, uh, every week, however often you're paid or every two weeks. But your bills are usually due once a month. So you're going to look at your monthly income. You're going to look at your expenses. And you are going to prioritize the responsibilities that you have to take care of with the income you have coming in. And your income, right, is not infinite. There is a set amount of money. You have a salary, whether you're working for yourself or whether you're creating your income because you have your own company. But there is a set amount of money that is coming in once a month. It might be a little more if you work overtime uh, certain times. But you get the gist of what I'm saying. You can roughly say, this is what I make monthly give or take. And with that amount of money, right, you have to allocate it to resources and you have to prioritize. And so you might have someone that comes and says, listen, I need to borrow $500, but you have rent, you have a light bill, you have a phone bill, you got groceries. And let's say that this is someone who you've loaned money to in the past and they haven't paid you back and you've loaned money to them twice in the past, the previous two times. You're probably, if you are a responsible steward with your money, are going to say, I can't do it. I have my own bills that I have to take care of. So you are going to number, so to speak, what you do with your money and you are going to apply your emotions to wisdom. You're going to apply your heart to wisdom. So even if they're trying to tug at your heart strings, you understand that if you don't pay your rent or mortgage, you can't tug at your landlord's heart strings. So there's a level of respect an intentionality that a good steward will apply to their money yet oftentimes we don't apply the same level of intentionality and wisdom when it comes to our time attention conversations and personal space and then we wonder why we feel more depressed why we're angrier why we're more anxious even what we watch on tv or, 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 or streaming shows, or we're watching on YouTube, whatever the details are. We even want to be intentional about what we take in our spirit. So 
Are you applying your heart to wisdom when it comes to your time, attention, conversations, and personal space? Are you applying your heart to wisdom? And so perhaps you were at a family gathering and your sibling, your cousin, your aunt, your uncle, you can assert the family member, has a argumentative personality where they like to bring up whatever subject, and they like to just argue about it because that's their personality. They get enjoyment out of it, but you don't enjoy arguing. And they're like, so how do you feel about X, Y, Z? And you already know, no matter what answer you give them, oh, that's so dumb, that's stupid, that it's going to be an unnecessary argument. At that point, you want to ask yourself, is it the best use of my time to engage in this conversation. And it doesn't mean you have to be rude. You can be boundaried and clear without being nasty. So really begin to think about that. Or somebody, let's say that you're on social media and you have a business and you're at a family gathering or you're around a friendship group. And somebody from that group says, you know, I think that a lot of your posts suck. And I think that, uh, I don't know how you run the business because I think your posts suck. You have a decision to make in that moment. Are you going to go back and forth with an individual who's not even your target audience for your business and allow them to waste your time? They're wasting your time. And you waste your own time when you go back and forth with them as opposed to being very intentional And when you're intentional, you're avoiding a lot of arguments because you're detached. So there is a level of emotional control and emotional detachment that is necessary for you to be intentional with your time, attention, conversation, and personal space. And when you have a level of emotional attachment, I'm sorry, detachment, There's also a level of, I don't care what you think and I'm not seeking your validation. And once you begin to master those those two skills, I don't care what you think and I'm not seeking your validation, you're going to cut a lot of conversations short and you're, you're going to respond to very little. So the person can say, oh, I think that your posts suck and I don't even know why you're in business. You're not going to feel the need. Oh, that's so mean. They know it's mean. No, I'm just telling you the truth. I'm not being mean. Now you're engaging in something. How is that bettering your life? Is is it making your your business money? No, it's not. Is it getting you more clients for your business? No, it's not. So it's a complete waste of your time from somebody who's not even invested in what you're trying to build and who's not trying to help you grow. It is a complete waste of time. And sometimes it's just about being okay that they don't like what you're doing. They don't have to like it. They're not your target audience. And when you're not seeking validation from, and here's the problem that most people won't face. There is a level of seeking validation and seeking approval when you're arguing with that family member. There's a level of that. I can't believe you said that to me. That's so me. What's not to believe? It came out of their mouth. You heard it. That means you can believe it. If you heard it, you can believe it. And if other people who were in the room with you heard it, you can believe it because they heard it too. What's not to believe? And so once you hear that and you know what it is, why waste your time going back and forth with them? Yeah, well, I think your business is stupid. All right. That's what they think. You don't care. How is that making your business money? You simply don't care. And when you begin to master the I don't care and I'm not seeking your validation because you don't put food on my table, you don't pay my bills. You're not helping me. In fact, you're trying to hinder me and you're trying to get in my head to bring me down. So why in the world would I give my energy to caring what you think? I got to detach from your chaos. I got to detach from your inner chaos. That's inner chaos. They're bringing you confusion. If you're minding your business, eating your food at the family gathering, you don't talk to them about your social media business. And they feel the need to walk over to you to tell you how stupid they think your business is and how you just need to hang it up. Clearly, clearly, 
They are not sitting next to you to have a meaningful, uplifting, encouraging conversation. You can discern that by what they're saying to you. So now it's your responsibility as an adult to protect your peace. And you protect your peace. We talk a lot about protecting our peace without the nuances of how to do that. You protect your peace by protecting your time, attention, conversations, and personal space. You treat it like you treat your money, better than you treat your money. When you treat your money responsibly, you have a budget. I got a budget when it comes to my time, conversations, and personal space. I got a budget. And there are some people who I have determined I can't afford. I, I can't afford to have this conversation with you because it will cost me my peace. Now, I don't say that because I'm not going to give nobody the keys to my heart. I'm going to guard my heart, especially if I know you're trying to get at me. But there's some I can't afford to have this conversation because it's negative and draining. You're too expensive for me. You got it. You won. Shut it down. Oh, your business is so stupid. Hey, different strokes for different folks. Now, I'm just saying it's stupid. I heard you the first time. Different strokes for different folks. Well, let me, I'm going to tell you why it's stupid. No, what you know, you're not going to tell me why it's stupid because I'm going to get up and I'm going to go sit near so-and-so and I'm not going to answer you. Sometimes you got to be that. Sometimes you have to put people in their place. Let your yes be yes and your no be no. You can't stop a person from talking, but you can most certainly stop yourself from engaging. And so even if they choose, well, I'm going to say what I want to say. Well, you're talking to the wall at this point because you're not going to get an answer from me. You are talking to the wall and the wind. And so once they're talking to the wall and the wind, they don't have nothing to do with you. Well, your business is stupid and I'm just letting you know. They're talking to the wall and the wind. So when they're talking to the wall and the wind, can you hear the wall talking? No, you cannot. You hear the wind talking? No, you cannot. So I don't hear you. Even when I hear you, I don't hear you. I will look at you as if I don't see you. I will look at you and you will be like, I know she hears me. Why is she not answering me? Because you're talking to the wall and the wind. And you might not even get a look. I may pick up my phone while you're talking to me and start watching videos. It is, it is not rude. It is boundary behavior. The thing we have to understand, when you're dealing with a person who's disrespectful and no boundaries, you got to respect yourself and have boundaries. When you're dealing with a person who has no respect, when you clearly cut the conversation and they're going to say what they want to say regardless, then you'll be even more boundary. Pick up your phone and start watching the video. Put your put your ear your ear your earphones on and start listening to music and bopping your head. So I really can't hear you because this song is good. Oh, you so rude. No, you're so boundaried. You're so boundary. When you are focused on protecting your peace, when you are focused on not allowing anyone to steal your joy, and it's clear that they're being a demon in this moment. You're going to respect your time, your attention, your conversations, and your personal space. You're going to respect these things. You're going to treat it like you treat your money. See, because I'm on a budget. I got a mental budget. I got an emotional budget. And I got a personal space budget. Everybody can't come to my house. There are some people, they too expensive. You cost me too much. So you, you, you're not welcome in my home. You cost me too much. You can't come to my home. And if you if you ring the bell uninvited and I have made it clear that you can't come to my home, you're going to be standing outside at the other end of the door. And I will not be moved. I will not care about your hurt feelings. I will not care that you feel a particular way that I let you stay outside because my no was no the first time. So what you're not going to do what you're not going to do is make me backtrack on my own boundaries. Well, you know, I just want to come visit, but I said no. So what you want at that point don't matter. And until we become crystal clear 
about protecting our time and our space and determining you, this, this is going to cost too much. You're going to cost me a whole day and I'm going to be down in the dumps and depressed. If you know that, set up your boundaries, even around your personal space. You ain't got to be mean, but you do have to be clear. When you're invited to certain gatherings and you know that when you leave the gathering because you've had enough experience as a grown adult, you have enough experience with whoever the person is or group is that drains you. And you know you're going to be drained, start declining some of them invitations. Well, Cassandra, if I decline the invitation, they're going to talk about me. They're probably talking about you anyway. So if they're going to talk, at least let them talk on your terms. If they're going to talk about you behind their back, live on your terms. They're talking anyway. So do what makes you happy. Live to please God and not man. Live to please God and not man. And you got to go back to, is this the best use of my time? Go back to that scripture. Is it the best use of my time sitting in a space where I am not celebrated, where I am tolerated, where I am treated with disrespect and disregard for the sake of being around family, for the sake of showing up for friends who rarely show up for me. Is this the best use of my time? Is this God's best for me? Pray about it. I mean, it's clear. The scriptures are, are clear. Teach me to number my days so that I may gain a heart of wisdom. So start treating your time, your retention, your conversations, and your personal space like you treat your money. And I promise you, I promise you, you will begin to see a lot less stress in your life. And when people ask you how you're doing, you are honestly going to be able to say, I am blessed and not stressed. Because your level of boundary keeps a lot of the stress away. Yes, people are going to talk about you, but they're going to talk about you anyway. So you might as well do what brings you joy. Determine which conversations are out of your budget. See, there's certain conversations that it's not in my budget. And so if you're a family member who's an atheist and you want to come at me and argue with me, over the ministry God put inside of me, that conversation is too expensive. It's not my job to argue with you. It's not my job to argue with you. So if you want to let me know, well, I'm an atheist and I'm just letting you know that I don't believe, okay. I mean, I ain't got an answer for your thought, word, and deed. When your time is up, that ain't got nothing to do with me. That's on you. See, what I'm not going to do is argue with you. You're not going to raise my blood pressure. You're not going to add another gray hair to my head. And you're not going to stress me. So if you an atheist, that's between you and God. I ain't got nothing to do with that. But you want to come tell me because you want to engage me in a debate. How is that serving me? How is that serving the kingdom? We are to share the good news, not force the good news. So once the good news is shared and you don't want to receive it, even God doesn't force himself on us. Salvation is a gift he gives and we either accept it or reject it. So if you choose to reject that, what that between you and God? I'm just letting you know I'm an atheist. Okay, you let me know. I, now I know. I don't know what you want me to do with that information. No, I'm just saying because you, you be having church by phone and I don't know why you be having church by phone every Sunday because I'm letting you know that like I don't believe. Okay, you said it the first time I heard you. You don't believe. All right. Let me go make, make me a plate. You want some potato salad? They're going to be mad. They're going to be mad because they're trying to get a rise out of you. But the minute you come around me with that BS... I've already determined that maintaining a conversation with you is too expensive. This conversation is above my budget. You a job for Jesus. So this is above my budget. You cost me too much, so I can't converse with you. Not about that. I can't converse with you. So whether I get up and move and start talking to somebody else, 
whether I pick up my phone and start watching videos and just act like I don't hear you no more, or whether I put AirPods in my ear and start bopping my head to whatever I'm listening to, you will not get a rise out of me. Determine that. When you're invited certain places, start asking yourself, can I afford it? And I'm not talking financially. Can I afford this spiritually, mentally, and emotionally? Can I afford this family gathering mentally? What, what is going to do to my peace? Can I afford being around these folks emotionally? What is going to do to my emotions? You know what? This not in the budget this year. <laughs> this, this, this not in the budget. Not financially. This not in my emotional budget. Because I'm healing this area of my life. I'm sorry, it's not in the budget. You don't, you don't need to say this to people. But in your mind, you need to determine that. So start treating your time, attention, your conversations, and your personal space like you treat your money. I had someone who was so bent on wanting to come to my place. They were a friend of a family member, but not my friend personally. And I made it very clear to my family member you know how I am. I got funny ways. I, I preface that. So if you want to be in my life, you need to know that because I may not be the right fit for you. So you already know I have funny ways. Number one, you can't drop by unannounced because I got things to do. Number two, you can't bring somebody to my house that I don't know. It must be cleared with me first. I don't care who's offended. I don't care who don't like it. It's your choice not to come if it bothers you. And if you choose to bring somebody to my house without clearing it with me, I'm going to come to the door and say, I'll see you next time. I am not embarrassed. And so once I set a boundary and you blatantly choose to disregard my boundary, I'm going to blatantly reinforce my boundary and you're going to get your feelings hurt. Now, it's not my goal to offend. But what you're going to do is respect my no. And if you disregard my no, then it's on me to respect it. So if I said don't bring Susan, we're going to give her name. That's not the person's name. And you bring her anyway. Because she put pressure on you after I said I don't want her in my home. <laughs> when I come to that door and see you and Susan, well, I guess we're going to catch you at the next thing. We, we will catch you at the next thing. We, we won't see you today. You take care. Sorry you came all this way for nothing. Because I already told you and you're disregarding my boundary. See, I can't afford Susan in my personal space. I don't, I don't want that energy in my personal space. You don't need to see what's going on where I'm at. Because you don't really rock with me like that. Let's be clear. So, treat your time, your attention, your conversations... And your personal space, like you treat your money, make yourself a budget. I'm not talking financial. Think about the things that bring you down, that stress you. Think about the things that try to steal your joy and make a budget. Even in the workplace, you can't help who you sit next to. You might have a hater that shares the same office space as you, that's right next to you. But what you can have total control over is whether you allow them to break your focus and what kind of conversations that you engage in, how much of your personal private business you divulge, you have control over that. So when they ask you certain questions that you have already deemed is too personal and we don't really rock with each other like that because this person is a gossip and I've seen them in action or they speak out of both sides of their mouth or they stab people in the back and they create mayhem in the workplace and I want no parts of it then I got to determine it's going to cost me too much to divulge my personal business to this person. It's, I can't afford that. It's not in the budget, baby. It ain't in the budget. It's not in the budget. Somebody put in the comments section, it ain't in the budget. I didn't say not. We speak in broken English today. It's broken English. It ain't in the budget. You want to go to lunch today and you already know they was talking about you behind your back. You ain't got to be nasty. Just remind yourself, nah, it ain't in the budget for me to go to lunch. Because if I go to lunch and I'm hot, I'm mad because I know you're talking about me. I may spaz. 
So for my own self-control, because the Bible says, in your anger, do not sin. See, I don't want to sin because I'm angry right now and I'm liable to go there. It's too, I, I, I can't afford it. I ain't even talking money-wise. I can't afford to go to lunch with you ever. And just nicely say, no, thank you. I'm good. Make yourself a mental and emotional budget and start being very clear about what you were going to allocate your resource of time, attention, conversation, and personal space to. And I promise you, I promise you, you're going to increase your peace. There are going to be people that will have an attitude because they can't control you. They can't have their way. They can't disturb their, your peace. But you're going to increase your peace. So I hope this was helpful for anyone who might be struggling in this area. With that said, a couple of announcements. I'm going to let you know about the new book and our Simple Prayer series I'm really excited about. It's Simple Prayers for Financial Increase, Wisdom, and Overflow. And these are Bible-based prayers that you can pray concerning your finances. It's available at Amazon. And we also have Simple Prayers to pray for your children. And if you're a grandparent, you can pray these prayers for your grandchildren. And uh, those books are available at Amazon. And we have an event coming up in October for women. It's Saturday, October 12th. It's live in New York City. And it is Fix Your Crown Sis, where women are coming together to be encouraged, poured into, uplifted for their purpose in this season. So if that sounds like you, you'll see the link in the video description box. When you click on the link, it'll take you to the event right page where you can find out more information about how to get tickets, about the event, and so forth. So remember, treat your time, attention, conversations, and personal space even more intentional than you treat your money and determine, determine for yourself a mental and emotional budget and a spiritual budget. So with that being said, have an awesome day. No matter who you are, you will have haters. John 15 verse 18 says, If the world hates you, know that it hated Jesus first. So if you have haters, know that God is greater than your haters. Lately you've been feeling, feeling the way of your haters coming at you with their envy and their hate, scheming against you. Throwing mud on your name But God's gonna work it out Despite their lies and game God is great